Lake Winnipeg regulation has not significantly altered water levels over the long term, and in fact has offered significant flood protection benefits to lake users and property owners. But is regulation responsible for any of the water quality issues currently facing the lake? Since the mid-90s, Lake Winnipeg has suffered from increasingly intense algae blooms. Besides impacting beaches, these blooms have the potential to affect the productivity of the lake as a commercial fishery and damage the overall biology of the lake. Dr. Al Christofferson is managing director of the Lake Winnipeg Research Consortium a nonprofit group founded in 1998 to coordinate scientific research about Lake Winnipeg. So Peter, hello. Well, Today, the consortium out. continues its work on the lake to gain a better understanding of the biological and chemical processes yeah. that are critical to its well-being. So we're doing some stations along the way. The group so operates the out. MV Nemeo out of Gimli Harbour as a platform for its studies. Uh, Lake Winnipeg, as you may or may not know, it's one of the least studied lakes in the world. Um, for that reason, there's a very, very great need to do research on the lake. But beyond that, uh, it's suffering from a problem. And the problem is technically cultural eutrophication or nutrient enrichment caused by many, many different uh, activities in its large uh, drainage basin. The two key nutrients are phosphorus and nitrogen, and plants require them. Plants, wherever they are, whether they're on land or in the water, require them. Well, if you put these nutrients, fertilizers, essentially in Lake Winnipeg, the plants in the lake grow, like algae, for instance. Uh, that's fine. Algae are vital uh, for the health of the lake. If you didn't have algae, you wouldn't have anything else. They form the base of the food chain, really, in the lake. But too much of a good thing is too much. And what's been happening into Lake Winnipeg, uh, arguably over the last 50 years, is the concentration of these nutrients has been increasing year after year after year. The size of the algae blooms have been increasing as well. Basically in the winter time when the algae die and they sink to the bottom and they decompose, the decom decomposing process actually uses up oxygen in the water and the creatures that live there need that oxygen and they die. Fish can swim away from it at least you know in the short term but some of the small creatures that live on the bottom can't and they die. So uh, although a lot of people don't understand the nature of the problem, it really is pretty straightforward and, and pretty simple. Uh, too much nutrient, too much algae, uh, the, the uh, dying of the algae, the, the oxygen depletion, and the subsequent uh, consequences to the creatures that live in the lake. Certainly there's been speculation that uh, regulation of water levels in Lake Winnipeg to produce hydropower has in some way contributed to a deterioration of water quality, but the answer to that question right now is we don't know. Uh, and this starts with the, the concept of a reservoir. So the assumption is, okay, we've created a, a reservoir as far as Lake Winnipeg is concerned. We've slowed down the velocity of the water. All of this particulate phosphate that's coming into the lake is going to settle into the bottom and it's going to build up over time and it's going to create a problem. Well. We don't know that, and, and, and in a sense, um, we have to accept the fact that, that Lake Winnipeg isn't a typical reservoir. A typical reservoir, a really good example of a typical reservoir is the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River. When that was built, the Colorado River was a raging, uh, sediment-laden uh, river uh, flowing into the Gulf of California. So when they built the Hoover Dam in the early 30s, they slowed the velocity down, and they created a reservoir, Lake Mead. So when all of these uh, suspended particles came in, they would indeed settle to the bottom. That's really not the case in Lake Winnipeg. As a matter of fact, in high water years, it isn't a reservoir at all. When something happens in our midst, uh, something that we didn't expect, but we have to deal with, like the eutrophication issue on Lake Winnipeg, we tend right away to say, okay, who's to blame? Well, uh, I personally think that the blame game is a ridiculous waste of time. But others don't think that way and they like to, they ju like to jump to conclusions. So I have heard and seen in various media uh, presentations that hydro regulation appears to or is responsible for deteriorating water quality. And right now that's pure speculation. Uh, and, and science doesn't deal with speculation. Science deals with hard fact. Indeed, it's established on hypothesis. Has in fact hydro regulation done this? Uh, well, we don't know. But you start with a hypothesis and then you test it. And that's what we intend to do uh, as our research continues. 
As Manitoba Hydro moves forward with the process of converting its interim operating license for Lake Winnipeg regulation into a final license, the utility is encouraging further research into all water quality issues affecting Lake Winnipeg. We support the Lake Winnipeg Research Consortium. We have done for a long time and we'll continue to do it without in any way trying to influence what they're looking for. But the, the objective is to find out what is happening to the health of the lake. And there's other organizations that we work with as well. The International Institute for Sustainable Development has a, a major program in play to assess the problems of the lake. Uh, there's various research programs that we have going through the year, different universities, uh, particularly looking into the water quality, the behavior of the Netley Marsh. But our, our, everything we've seen to date would suggest that uh, our operations have a, a minimal, if any, effect on the health of the, of the lake. So what have I discovered? Well, regulated or not, wind and wave-driven shoreline erosion has always been, and will continue to be, a major issue around the lake. There's little Lake Winnipeg regulation can do about that. But regulation has virtually eliminated overland flooding and reduced the severity and duration of any flooding that does occur by allowing up to 50% more water to flow out of the lake during wet years. I also discovered that the lake levels will continue to fluctuate depending upon how much water flows into the lake and that while Manitoba Hydro doesn't hold the lake at its upper license limit, the full 711 to 715 foot range is still required in order to help ensure an adequate supply of water for hydroelectric generation during dry years. And finally, scientific research is ongoing to help determine what, if any impact, Lake Winnipeg regulation has on the health of one of this province's greatest natural assets.